Zuhure Khudai. Khudai plays goalkeeper for Iran's women's soccer team. She's also at the center of a recent spat between Amman and Tehran. Last month, Khudai heroically stopped two penalty kicks by the Jordanian team, resulting in Iran's historic qualification for the 2022 Women's Asian Cup. And the Jordanians were furious. On Sunday, the president of its football association, Prince Ali bin Al Hussein, shared a letter he sent to the Asian Football Confederation. Federation. Al Hussein wants a gender verification test for Khudai, suggesting she's a man posing as a woman. Al Hussein called on the AFC to, quote, please wake up, and described it as a very serious issue, if true. Iran's team coach, Mariam Irandust, dismissed the allegation. The medical staff has carefully examined each player on the national team in terms of hormones to avoid any problems in this regard. And so I tell all fans not to worry. These allegations are just an excuse not to accept defeat by the Iranian women's national team. The Asian Football Confederation was also quick to respond to Jordan's claims, stating Khudai is indeed female. But Iran's past is tarnished with men playing as women players. In 2014, four players on the women's team were discovered to be men who had not yet undergone sexual reassignment surgery, drawing much criticism. What's up, guys? Derek, moreplaysmart8.com. Today, we're going to be talking about the goalie for Iran women's soccer team accused of being a man. So, this is Iranian goalkeeper. I'm going to fucking butcher this, and I apologize ahead of time. Zora Kude during a match in September 2021. The Jordan Football Association has accused the goalkeeper for the Iran women's soccer team of being a man. Zore Kude, 32 years old, has since responded to the JFA's request for a gender verification test. Or check, I should say. So this is the original tweet, apparently. Statement issued by the Jordanian Football Association. Details. Then we have the, uh, the details here. And convert it into English. And in addition to what is being circulated in the media and the reactions of the transmission of false... Blah, 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 um, all right, I don't know if this is going to be accurate or whatever, but anyways, it's all in the news. And this other tweet was actually deleted recently from another, uh, I believe it was the president of, we'll be getting to it shortly, it's down later in the story. But basically we have Zore saying she will sue the Jordan Football Association for, you know, speculating that she's a man. She told Turkish newspaper Hurriyet, I am a woman. This is bullying from Jordan. The allegation came after Iran beat Jordan in Uzbekistan on September 25th to qualify for its first ever Women's Asia Cup. Kude saved two penalties in the 4-2 shootout victory. A team manager for Iran denied the gender allegation and said the Jordanian team was looking for an excuse for losing the match. This is uh, her making a save against Jordan. So let's see if we can uh, zoom in here. Right there. So obviously, I think it goes without saying that there are Evident masculine features that are not congruent with that of a traditional, you know, feminine cranium at the end of the day. Like the testosterone level in females is, you know, like 15 to 70 nanograms per deciliter. And for men, you know, the reference range is like 250 to 1000. But there is this interesting threshold blind blurring kind of thing going on recently with kind of like intersex individuals. Obviously there are trans athletes too, who are literally biological males transitioning to female, but for individuals who've identified female as their entire lives and otherwise have grown up, you know, that is exactly what they biologically identified as from birth essentially, or what they biologically were at birth identified as, and they themselves identified continuously for the rest of their fucking lives, they may still exhibit significantly masculine dominant traits, given that they have some of these intersex characteristics that may go overlooked, given that ultimately you're not going to be able to tell unless you literally investigate the fucking genitalia of this individual, their hormonal status, and you know certain different things that are kind of kind of weird to like, inquire about, which is kind of where this, you know, they're getting heat for asking for a gender verification check, which as you would expect, is very insulting for a female to be like, what the fuck, you know, like <laughs> I, I am a girl, you know, why, like, I'm not going to let you literally like 
examine my goddamn, you know, vagina to figure it out, which I would imagine is, uh, you know, a reasonable response. You know, I would, I can imagine she's quite insulted. You know, the gender verification check, kind of a fucked up thing to say after you lose. And I bet if they won, maybe they, they probably wouldn't have been asking for that, I imagine. However, on the other side of the coin, I can see why you would be, you know, a bit skeptical given that she kind of looks like Giga Chad, bro. So, in a letter dated November 5th, the JFA cite, cited doubts over the eligibility of a participating player and claimed the Iranian women's team has a history with gender and doping issues. The JFA requested for the AFC to initiate a transparent and clear investigation by a panel of independent medical experts to investigate the eligibility of the player in question and others on the team. The president of the JFA, Prince Ali bin Al Hussein addressed the letter in a tweet on Saturday, calling the allegations a very serious issue, if true. He also called on the AFC to please wake up. So that was the president of the Jordan Football Association. That was the tweet that got deleted. So he addressed the letter in a tweet, and that tweet is no longer existing. Sorry, that tweet has been deleted. So obviously he didn't want that out there anymore. Um, and I can see why, you know, this is a very controversial thing. So no relevance to previous tweets, but it's a very serious issue. If it's true, please wake up. A spokesman for the AFC said the AFC does not comment on ongoing investigations and or proceedings, whether actual or potential. Iran's coach, Miriam Irandus, told sports outlet Varvesh 3 that the team's medical staff has carefully examined each player on the national team in terms of hormones to avoid any problems in this regard. And so I tell all fans not to worry. The 2022 AFC Women's Asian Cup will begin in January in India. So now the iffy thing is having your blood test analyzed. Now this is a transient snapshot in time and you can otherwise heavily fuck with this if you really wanted to. And in addition to that, there is no stipulations on testosterone requirements and threshold values anymore. As of recently, we're actually going to be talking about the IOC revising their testosterone restrictions to allow intersex individuals with literal internal gonads to compete against biological women who have just normal, you know, hormone production. So you'll have women with internal testicles producing a bunch of testosterone competing against women that don't have testicles. Seems a bit unfair, you know? But anyways, we'll move on to the update on the story is Hero Girl. Tehran puts up huge posters hailing Iranian women's goalkeeper after defeated rivals Jordan claimed she was a man and demanded gender verification test. And so it sparked complaint from Jordan's FA demanding gender verification. In show of support, Iran put up huge posters of her in the capital, hailing her as heroic girl and the pride of Iran. Iran has put up huge posters across the... Okay, we just fucking read that. So we already got through that. In response, goalkeeper is still planning on suing Jordanian FA for bullying in a sign of support. The huge posters have gone up. Featured a picture of her with words, heroic... Pride of Iran, goalkeeper of the Iranian women's team. It comes after Kuday said, empathetically, I'm a woman. This is bullying from Jordan. I will sue the Jordan FA. I would like to hear her speak just to see um, the actual tonality of her voice. Because again, like it's not like any of this at the end of the day. Hormonal exposure can vary in a way such that you could essentially be the equivalent of a female or a guy, depending on what your hormone profile is. Okay, maybe... <laughs> Okay, so your actual biological infrastructure is going to determine essentially if you're a guy or a girl. But in addition to that, your hormonal state can put you in a position where you can essentially transit, like literally transitioning, you know, this is where this comes from. You can have a biological male transition to female and essentially become unrecognizable from what he once, I, you know, was at during his upbringing simply through in, like significant exposure to estrogen and deprivation of androgens. And on the opposite side of the spectrum, you can have a woman get masculinized extremely quickly with very, very little androgen exposure, believe it or not, within a very short order of time. So I actually did a video on how quickly your voice can change when you're exposed to hormones. So this was a biological female transitioning to male, and this is how quickly her voice changed during testosterone exposure. James Miller and I am five days on T. What's up? I'm Miller. This is my voice. Two weeks on T. This is my voice. Four weeks on T. This is my voice update. Two months on testosterone. What's up? My name is Miller and I am 10 months on testosterone. I'm officially one year on testosterone. So pretty fucking quick, dude. Really fucking quick. And you would not 
you know, a lot of people would not think this was not that long ago, a female with normal female hormone levels and sounded like a girl, you know? And funnily enough, this, this TikTok um, inspired a pretty funny fucking um, parody, which I feel like I should show you guys right now, <laughs> from Jeffrey um, Schofield. So this is uh, um, being on trend. <laughs> it's fucking, I couldn't help but bring this up. It was fucking hilarious, dude. What's up? I'm Jeff. This is day one on trend. What's up? This is Jeff. This is one week on trend. Hey guys, what's up? This is one month on trend. You guys checking in? This is three months on trend. Bitches, this is one year on trend. Ten years on trend, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hilarious, dude. So, so anyways, so this, uh, again, when it comes to hormonal exposure, like things can very quickly sway in opposite directions very quickly. So again, you can understand why a individual who is biologically female or otherwise identifies as female could otherwise undergo some kind of like hybrid masculine like traits where they otherwise develop a bit more of a developed jawline or cranial structure or their general, their overall muscular infrastructure, to be honest, could be otherwise, you know, representative of more male characteristics if they have heightened testosterone levels and androgenic signaling relative to a biological female who has less testosterone exposure as a result of, you know, there's certain different things that can cause high tests like polycystic ovarian syndrome. But mostly like when you have intersex characteristics, it has this really weird fucking in-between scenario where you otherwise, do you penalize this individual or do you um, just, you know, chalk it up to a genetic outlier? Because there are males that otherwise have, you know, like adrenal tumors and like weird things that otherwise result in like ridiculously high hormone output, but they aren't getting suppressed with, you know, hormone blockers and shit in competition. But for females, individuals who identify as female, but otherwise have more male looking hormone profiles, or at least skewing somewhere in the middle, they are subject to, you know, hormonal interventions where they have to crush their hormones. At least they did until recently. But I'm not saying that's what she has necessarily, but I, it kind of presents an interesting scenario where it's like, if you have somebody who is potentially in the middle, like, is it an unjustified request to ask for this? Like, maybe there's an anonymous, an anonymous way to do it where you're not publicly, like, shaming them or exposing them in a way that's, like, embarrassing for them. Because, again... They basically, this guy basically like tweeted it out. He's like, give, let me know that you're a fucking chick, like over Twitter, rather than submitting some sort of, a, I don't know, request for medical, I don't know, documentation to prove that we've done this careful examination. You know, blurting it out on Twitter, you know, perhaps not the best, you know, move if you don't want to get, you know, her pissed off at you. But on the other side of the spectrum, if you get fucking smoked by some athlete and you're highly skeptical that they, are actually a biological female and they exhibit certain masculine dominant traits, are you not, you know, would it not be justified to explore further and, you know, ask for verification? I don't know, man. Kind of a weird fucking line that is being drawn more recently in uh, women's sports, you know, because you have a lot of males who are literally going their entire lives as males and decide, you know what, you know, I, well, maybe they didn't just decide then, you know what I mean? Throughout their lives, they are operating as males with hormonal exposure equivalent to that of a male and get all of the infrastructure, lung capacity, oxygen carrying capacity, androgenic signaling in the brain, bone mineral density, height, limb length, leverages, etc. benefits of being a guy. And then later in their 30s, if they decide to transition, well, a lot of that shit you end up retaining indefinitely. And then you go compete against females in MMA. Like, what the fuck, bro? That's not exactly the, you know, fairest thing ever, probably. And yet, you know, are you a, you know, hateful fucking person for, you know, saying that that shouldn't happen? I, you know, the fucking lines are getting blurred, dude. Lately, it's getting kind of, getting kind of iffy. So we have, again, the intersex thing is kind of insane, though, because you have individuals competing in the Olympic Games who are otherwise essentially operating with borderline borderline male testosterone levels like more male testosterone than female when you actually like compare it in some case in some cases and it has sparked significant debate and led to the old the, the entire like testosterone blocking suppression 
rules, but after that, they actually removed that. So now you have a subset of rules that essentially allows any individual, regardless of their genetic predispositions, their hormonal aberrations, their you know interesting and unique characteristics, regardless of how male they are, if they identify as female, regardless if your test levels are 600 plus, you're allowed to compete in female Olympic sports now, apparently. I don't know, seems kind of fucking wild. We'll be touching on that in the next video, but if you haven't seen my XY chromosomes video, um, it kind of delves into this a bit deeper because at the end of the day, you know, if you are, if you have athletes competing against XX women and you have somebody who is identifying as a woman and is like, you know, relatively feminine, but she's jacked as fuck and has internal testes, like it does not seem fair at the end of the day. So to request a gender verification, perhaps they did not go about it in the most, you know, cordial way or anonymous way keeping it private, but is it out of the question given what's going on lately at like, again, when you look at some of these events in the Olympics, this is not obscure and rare. Like a lot of the top individuals are all within these, you know, like parameter cutoffs where they have like top three placing athletes all with intersex, you know, testosterone suppressing, requiring context in their situation, if that was even a grammatically correct sentence whatsoever. fucking ever. These are individuals who otherwise needed to shut down their test levels because they were too masculine, essentially. And if there's multiple of these individuals placing in the top of women's Olympic events, it's not as rare as you'd think. And even if it is rare, like it is, okay, it's rare in the general population, but these individuals coincidentally are the ones rising to the top of the athletic sports. You know, at the end of the day, there's obviously an overlap of individuals, individuals with significantly aberrant outlier hormone levels as a result of genetic predispositions from, you know, very, very uh, unique biological scenarios they've basically been put into where they have, you know, like in between private parts, essentially, and they're producing like male level hormones. And coincidentally, these individuals are placing at the top, you know, like, I, I don't think it's a fucking coincidence. I think there's a reason for it. And I imagine that it, it was justified to, you know, look into it further. And, you know, taking these restrictions off, I don't think the answer is to have them suppress their test levels, though, either necessarily, because again, you're putting them in a scenario where there's a lot of manual manipulation, hormonal slash pharmacology intervention that can be fucked with at will, essentially. And you have individuals who can otherwise pull their foot off the brake and let themselves all of a sudden hyper accelerate into male territory again at will and otherwise have significant advantages afforded them through their pharmacology that they, uh, you know, their other competitors that they're competing against simply don't have the advantage of. They are competing with 40 nanogram per deciliter total test levels. And then you have some somebody who's literally producing tests out of internal fucking balls, essentially, and producing like 200, 300, 400. Who knows, dude? Who knows how high some of these girls are going? It's fucking nuts. So um, what's the answer? I don't know, goddamn, no. I just know that this is unfair, you know, at, a, at an overarching level, individuals that are winning events with test levels higher than a female could ever naturally produce it's not a coincidence. So asking for a gender verification check, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. This is, uh, oh, I forgot to show some other images because I guess I just had that one, but yeah. So, you know, is it warranted? Um, how should they have gone about it? And what do you do? You know, how do you solve it? Because I mean, it's kind of a weird uh, predicament in female sports. And obviously females with normal hormone profiles are not, as you would expect, are not afforded the same opportunity to succeed in their given sport when you have biological males transitioning to female and competing against them in fucking MMA and stuff, or you have intersex individuals who have internal testes producing more tests than they do, and otherwise getting a kind of hybrid, almost like male exposure level progression throughout puberty too, and developing a lot of those male dominated characteristics, although at a much more subtle level, but you still get advantages that are otherwise not afforded to females that produce natural female levels. So anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. All the comments help the algorithm. They're much appreciated. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplacemoredates.com. Follow me on Instagram, at moreplacemoredates, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below, my preventative medicine TRT clinic. It's all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home. Get high quality medical oversight from doctors who represent the same quality of information 
that I try to put forth on my channel and I vetted myself and stay up to date on all the cutting edge literature when it comes to biology, endocrinology, pharmacology, and make sure you are getting the highest quality diagnostics and interpretation of those diagnostics to determine what would be the most appropriate interventions for your current state to deal with your imbalances, deficiencies, or just overall health and vitality optimization practices. Because at the end of the day, we don't just deal with TRT. And we're not a cookie cutter clinic that is otherwise going to throw you on TRT, HCG, and Astrozole and kick you out the door. Rather, you can expect actual education with the biomarkers we've assessed, the diagnostics we feel we deem appropriate for your specific situation, and a context-dependent um, recommendation that may just involve lifestyle changes, dietary manipulation, sleep hygiene changes, supplementation regimens, perhaps, um, and if warranted, actual pharmacologic interventions as well. So... Um, we're turn team. We do it all. We're not just a you know cookie cutter TRT clinic at the end of the day. And we pride ourselves on staying up to date on all of the endocrinology information that's coming out in order to be most suited for attending any sort of needs you have, even as far down the rabbit hole as genetic testing and predispositions. We are even developing software to automate that process and develop certain recommendations and whatnot based on those individually specific identifying markers, polymorphisms, etc. So if you want to get access to the highest quality medical oversight, you can check it out. It's linked in the description below. This is something I wish I had access to years ago when I used to go on my hands and knees asking for a basic fucking lipid profile. Preventative medicine is the way of the future. Instead of waiting until you have a blocked artery, you get ahead of the game and you see what you can do to attenuate the development of any sort of disease state before you fucking get there and maximize your quality of life and performance simultaneously. So check it out if you want to get that in your camp. And I cannot overstate the importance of a high quality doctor enough who is non-judgmental and actually knows what the fuck they're doing. So check that out again, as well as anything else I'm associated with. Gorilla Mind Nootropic Formulas, Gorilla Mode Pre-Workout Formulas, and Design Myself from Scratch, my recommended diet model for gaining muscle and sports performance, clothing company that sponsors me, and anything else I'm associated with, it's all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.